So this is a diagram of the immune response that I have my students draw. We start with B cells and then we'll get into T cells. We'll show how both of them get activated and then the interaction of the activated cells. So we start with the B cells, which are drawn here. The B cells are just a circle and then they have antibody receptors coming out. I have them draw the antibody receptors in two different colors to show that B cells can be specific to different antibodies. Um, and different viruses, so that different antibodies are specific to different viruses. And then I have them draw the viruses, which are here, as the matching colors to the antibody receptors. So we talk about that there's many, many different B cells in the body, each specific to a different virus, and they just kind of float around in your immune system, in your lymph nodes, until they bump into a virus. When it bumps into a virus, the B cell is going to engulf the antibody, and the virus, and we call this phagocytosing. So we talk about what does that word mean. When it engulfs the B, or when the B cell engulfs the virus and the, and the antibody into it, the B cell breaks apart the virus into small pieces. So I have them show the virus and the antibody both being broken up, again, making sure that virus always stays in the same color as whatever they have it as. There's still those antibody receptors on the outside of the B cell, showing what the B cell is specific to. Once the virus has been broken up inside, pieces of the virus are going to get presented on the outside of the B cell on MHC2s. And I don't go into what MHC stands for because that's more jargon that they don't need. But just that we talk about this is some sort of um, part of the cell that's going to show to the rest of the lymph node and immune world that it lives in that, hey, I've run into a virus. This probably isn't a good thing. And so that's where we end with our B cells for the time being, and then we get into T cells. Now T cells are drawn a little differently. T cells are a circle and they have this wrench looking receptor coming out of it. It's kind of drawn like this. And then we show that there's this activated area in between. And in that activated area, it's activated just like before for a specific virus. So we're going to stick with our same color virus as before, so we make our activated spot in the same spot in the same color. T helper cells need dendritic cells to help them out. And a dendritic cell was actually going to engulf the virus and break it apart and present it on MHC2 just like the B cell does. So then we show our MHC2 presenting our virus. And we show the virus being broken up inside our dendritic cell, just like we did before with the B cell. Then our T cell, our helper T cell is going to come over and is going to be activated by the MHC2 on the dendritic cell. So that virus is sitting on our MHC2. It's specific, the T cell is specific for it. And then we show that it's been activated. And we use a little star to show that it's been activated. It helps the kids see where and what is activated. So then the activated T cell is going to release cytokines, which are just chemicals that are released into the immune system to let other T cells know, hey, I found a virus. This isn't good. Let's go do something about it. Let's go look for more of them. So this T cell gets activated again, the star on it, and these are just the little cytokines going out into the body. So now we show the interaction between B cells and T cells. Here we have our B cell with our MHC2, and then we have our activated T cell. The activated T cell is going to bind to the virus that's on the outside of the B cell, and we show them coming together. And then after that activated T cell comes together with the B cell, now is when our B cell is going to become activated. When our B cell becomes activated, then it's going to start to replicate itself and it's going to make more of itself. So we talk about what that means. And all of those B cells are now going to be specific for that virus that we're looking for. So now these are activated and now our newly activated B cells can now go and find more of the virus that they're specific for. And then now that we have activated B cells, we show by that star here, now those activated B cells can go out into the body and start engulfing more and breaking apart and destroying, which we show again them being destroyed inside the cell here, destroying more of the virus. So we talk about how long that would take and that's not going to be an instant response. It's going to take a day or two and that's why we have that period of two weeks or so when 
you know, we're starting to starting to feel sick, that incubation period of our bodies, and just having them understand that it doesn't happen right away. So this is what I show them. And then later on, we'll come back to this, and you'll notice that I have some little flora floors drawn here in blue and yellow. This goes into the experiment that they're going to do um, with a flow cytometer and how we can tag our B cells and T cells with different markers and fluorophores to help them out so we scientists can actually see what's going on. So that's what those are um, and you can incorporate that into your diagram or you can choose not to either way.